and we are live. Good evening everybody, it is off the cuff. Before we begin I'd first of all like to say hello to my spirit guide Grey Eagle who as always is standing to my right side and second I'd like to say hello to Chris. Hi Chris. Hi Rosemary, how are you tonight? I'm good, we're doing an off the cuff right? Yes. <laughs> off, off the cuff stuff. Uh, so, um, so before we go any further, let me t just tell you what a decadent dinner I had. Are you ready for this? Pizza, which I <laughs> rarely, very rarely eat, mushroom pizza and chocolate mousse. Uh, is that decadent or is that, what is that? I know it's full of calories, that's for sure. But anyway, that was my that was my dinner tonight. What did you have, Chris? Or are you still eating? Um, I had just started to have a piece of leftover chicken. All right, right. Oh, did I interrupt your dinner then when I called to say, shall we do it? No, we were planning on 8.30, so I was just trying to uh, <laughs> maximize the minutes. Oh, okay, okay. All right, well, um, do we, is there anybody there? We have people starting to trickle in right now. Okay. We know since we're, this is unplanned, it's sometimes harder for people to know you're coming on. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like, I think it's a surprise when people see that thing flash up on the phone or on their iPad or whatever it is. They think, what? She's here? She's what now? Yes, we're here. We're now. We are live. And uh, what we're going to do is because it, it is off the cuff. So we're going to spend... I don't know, as much time until the questions stop coming in or until I'm tired and have had enough. How about that, Chris? What do you think? <laughs> I so think that's good. If the questions if the questions stop before I've had enough, that's when we stop. So uh, we're sort of, we're here for everybody. We're excited. We haven't done an off the cuff for ages and ages and ages. Uh, but here we are and we're raring to go and this is the start of us, uh, wait a minute, we stopped doing off the cuff, we started doing off the cuff, this is the start again of off the cuff. I don't so, think Chris, we necessarily stopped, it's just life we, has been full of, let's say, some challenges lately, huh? Yeah, you're right about that. Um, I think we slowed down, let's put it that way, we didn't stop but we slowed down. So. Um, so who have we got? Anybody? Any comments? Well, Tiger, any? Tiger Pixie's on saying, hello, Rosemary and Chris. And how is your week going? My week's going great. Chris, how's your week going? Um, I think it's going okay. Okay. I there's no, there's is, no, nothing big to brag about. Well, my week is a little bit of a sad week uh, because this is my last week in New York. So it's my last week with my grandson uh before christmas unless i decide to hop over here in the meantime but um really christmas isn't that far away is that scary chris when we say that <laughs> i think it's it something is. like i think it's something like 13 or 14 weeks to christmas that sounds about right to that's me. crazy i know i know so anyway so here we are so um i should be i should be heading out uh, on Monday so I should spend the weekend with them here and then I'll be heading out on Monday back to Florida and uh, to my house which you know so it's going to be strange being back there it's going to be strange being on my own it's going to be strange you know uh, Reese was off school today because it was a, a Jewish holiday today so there was no school today so I've had him all day long and he has done nothing but chatter and chatter and chatter and chatter and chatter and chatter the whole day through. Uh, and it's been, it's made me laugh. It's made me despair at certain moments, I have to be honest, uh, because you try to do something or you ask him something and he's so busy chattering away and telling you all about which station this train stops at and which airport this stops at and which map he's going to draw today. He's all into travel. Maybe he'll take after me and have his whole life ahead of him traveling around the world. So, you know, because he's very much into 
uh, aircraft and spacecraft and and trains and uh, he's just recently been doing some amazing incredible maps so he you never know so he's perhaps have the wanderlust but he's been chatting and chatting and chattering up a storm and he's such a blessing he's such a beautiful beautiful child I know all you grandparents who are listening out there I know you're thinking exactly the same about your grandchildren um, I am so lucky and so blessed to have him so oh Chris let's go all right so Tiger Pixie's saying can you give me advice on how I can hear my spirit guide better yes you have to sit for 10 minutes quietly every single day put aside a certain time every day to sit to not ask questions to not probe the spirit world to not ask for signs but to just sit quietly and listen and look and pay attention pay attention to your senses pay attention to your five senses we are going to be doing webinars helping people to to develop their senses and to develop that ability to connect more with their loved ones in the spirit world with their own selves with their own soul we are going to be doing more and more of that in the coming year but uh listening is the best advice that i can give you right now my darling chris well because you mentioned 14 or so weeks until christmas whatever the exact amount is eric wants to know have you begun preparing the christmas cake yet it's <laughs> eric <laughs> it's funny you should ask uh, we were talking about it the other day, um, but no, it's a tiny bit early yet. I usually make it six, seven, eight weeks beforehand, uh, so it's a tiny bit early. But, you know, maybe when I get back, I have to gather all of the ingredients because some of the ingredients you, you cannot get in this country. Of course, you probably can get them on Amazon at an extortionate price, but some of the ingredients you cannot get here if i tell you that you cannot buy if anybody knows where in america i can actually get sultanas i'd be grateful some of you are saying what are they and they're like a dried fruit they are not a raisin uh let me tell you they are very different plumper more delicious in some ways than a raisin but raisins go in the Christmas cake as well. But I've often had to substitute raisins for sultanas. So, but um, I might have a packet or two in the freezer. I'll have to have a look. I'll have to search them out. But I have a friend who brings them to me in bulk. But as she only comes every couple of years, I'm running out. So if anybody knows where to get sultanas in America, so I don't have to pay the shipping fees or the extortionate uh, prices that they charge here for them i would be very grateful chris all right eric wants you to talk about flying cars i have no flying idea what, what that means cars he just wrote nothing. flying cars question mark i know nothing <laughs> nothing sorry okay um, you've got to be a bit more specific about that eric i, mean, I know nothing about flying cars whatsoever so Sorry. <laughs> Lisa says, I enjoyed your book, The Eagle and the Rose, and I have a question. Are our loved ones who have passed able to hear our thoughts? Everything. They're able to hear, to see, to sense, to be aware in every way. Uh, you know, when we're growing up, we have our secrets between, you know, we don't tell our parents various things. We maybe don't tell our siblings various things. We maybe don't tell our family or we don't even tell our friends. We keep secrets to ourselves, but guess what? There are no secrets. Those in the spirit world know all of our secrets. And don't worry. Don't start to wonder and worry. Do they not like you anymore? Do they not love you anymore? Because they're fully aware that those secrets are, you know, ours. Ours to keep and ours to own. They might know our secrets. They might know of our secrets. You'd be amazed. I can remember once uh, having a consultation with a lady who was, uh, she, she, one of her biggest issues was that she didn't matter what she tried for years and years and years and years, she couldn't lose weight. 
and she only ate very little of this and she only ate very little of that and on and on she went and her mother at some point who was in the spirit world listening to all of this started laughing and she said to me would you like to know where her she keeps her secret stash rosemary <laughs> and, she, and the mother told where the where this poor lady kept the secret stash of chip potato chips and chocolates and she would she would uh, you know go to bed at night and her secret stash was in her bedroom and she would just nibble away when she thought nobody was looking uh oh sorry sorry to tell you but any one of you doing that thinking that nobody knows what you're up to think again because our loved ones in the spirit world as our thirsty show does tell us that the spirit world sees all and it does chris <laughs> all right sharon has two questions for you yes. a two-part question is it hard for our loved ones to adjust to not having a voice box in the spirit world? And does it take time to learn how to communicate? Um, well, well, that is a new question for me. Uh, why would we need a voice box? When I talk to the spirit world, um, I talk to them mind to mind. Uh, emotion to emotion connection to connection uh, as they do me and their words are very loud and clear i understand them perfectly and my words to them are very loud and clear and they understand perfectly so we may not use our voice box but we definitely have a voice and we don't have to learn how to use it either that's a new one yes chris well, that's good because I've asked people in the chat room to try to stump you tonight, Rosemary, so we can have some new and different and interesting questions. So I hope have they come you through. Really? Have I you have. Really? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Chris, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. It is off what? the cuff, Rosemary. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? You know what? If I don't know the answers, I'm just going to tell you I don't know the answers. I think it's important that every one of us should remember whether it's we're talking with our grandchildren or whether it's we're talking to our children or whether it's we're talking to a work colleague, whoever it is. If somebody asks you a question and you don't know the answer, please don't be afraid to say, I don't know the answer to that. If it's a work colleague and, you sh and they feel you should know the answer, you can say, you know, I don't know the answer to that right now, but I'll check it out and I'll come back to you. Um, if it's your children or your grandchildren, please don't be afraid to tell them you don't know the answers to everything. You're not a guru. You're not, you know, the all-knowing and the all-seeing. And it's important, I think, to show our children that we really don't know everything about everything. Yeah, you know, and that there are certain things. That ha I don't know how many times I say to my grandson, uh, you know, maybe we should uh, check that out or we could ask Siri or why don't we Google that? And it not only does it help them to understand that we don't know everything uh, even even the great grandmother doesn't know everything um i think it's important also because you know you can show them how to search for things and how to search for knowledge you know uh, i remember i don't think that i ever picked up a dictionary until i was well into my teens i know some of you are shock horror with that imagine that I went through school without picking up a dictionary. I don't think anybody ever mentioned a dictionary. And I know that I was well into my 20s before I knew what a thesaurus was. And uh, some of you are saying, what? And some of you older than me are saying, what? What's a, thesa a thesaurus? <laughs> well, so you don't know everything. And I wish that when I was younger, somebody would have said to me, why don't you look in the dictionary and check this out in the dictionary? Or I wish somebody had said to me, you know, when I was writing, I was trying to think of a way to put something up, you know, because when you're writing, you can't say in one sentence, you can't use the same word over and over in one sentence. And the thesaurus will give you the word that you used initially, and then it will show you other words to use, which often mean the same thing, but different words. So, you know, I think that especially for a wordy like me, I'm a very, very, very keen word smith. Word smith, I think that's the right word. Uh, I love words. I love language. And, um, you know, so I think it's important that 
we teach our children and our grandchildren we are not all knowing and all seeing no matter what they think uh, and that, that we can encourage them to learn new skills by helping them by letting them know not only are they learning that we're learning too chris okay then the next one is from cheryl have you tasted much of any native american foods yeah uh, well, yes, a little, um, but, you know, it's hard to uh, taste authentic foods. I suppose, that's, I suppose that's the case in any culture, isn't it? Um, I have spent time with, um, uh, in the past with certain Native American groups and organizations. I was invited uh, a few years ago to go into the lodge uh, of the Aquasatsnes, um, and, uh, and they fed me, <laughs> I'm pleased to say. Um, I mean, so the answer I think is yes, a little bit. Chris. Another food question this time from Lori. She's wondering if you have tried the basil dip that maybe came through Wendy to you. <laughs> <laughs> a correction, a correction here. <laughs> uh, it came from me to Wendy. How about that? <laughs> no, I, I think she, I think she had a recipe that she shared with Wendy, and potentially Wendy might have shared it with you. Is what I'm reading. Oh, oh. Well, I know that I have given Wendy my pesto recipe. So whether she means that or not, I don't know. Other than that, I don't know. So if it's a whole other thing, no, I haven't tried it, no. All right, okay. from Grace, are our ancestors worried for children right now and the trauma of the loss slash changes of the pandemic? Um, well, first of all, let me tell you that I think our loved ones in the spirit world are always concerned for us. They're always checking on us. They're always, you know, concerned about what we're doing and so on. But I think the concerns stem more from our attitude towards the things that are going on. The pandemic, which one would that be? You know that through the centuries, there have been many, many, many pandemics. Um, COVID is the most recent. So, you know, it, it is not a universal disaster. It might feel like a disaster to many of us here on this earth, but trust me, it is not the disaster that we think that it is. Death is not a punishment. It's, it's so hard for me to try to explain this to people. And people die from so many different things. People, even with the pandemic, even this with this going on, you know, um, I don't know if anybody's ever read um, Children of the New Forest, and it talks about uh, sort of times in the in the uh, what does it talk about in the Tudor times, and uh, it refers to an old man. It's a great story if you ever want to read a story to your kids. It's a great story to actually sit down and read to your children. And I used to we used to take my daughter when she was little. We used to go to the New Forest and we'd picnic in the New Forest and. We'd find a nice spot, nice shady spot under the trees, and we'd read. Uh, we'd cook sausages on a on a little burner, and uh, read uh, Children of the New Forest. Uh, my point is that the one of the main characters in this book uh, talks. Uh, they talk about him as if he's an old man, and they all the way through the book they refer to him as the old man. It turns out that the old man is around sort of his mid to late 40s or early 50s because people didn't live that long. Think about this. They didn't live that long. So here we are in this time of pandemic uh, and we're still, people are still living to serve their 70s, 80s, 90s. Even we have people in their hundreds. Um, so it's all relative to what, uh, if, if you look at the world and you look at, just go back a hundred years and see how people lived a hundred years ago, the, 
you know the uh, the squalor the the uh, the dysentery that people used to suffer the the way that the um trying to think the way that the sewers were you know we we didn't you know we we didn't understand in those days a hundred years ago people rarely lived when we talk about old man they rarely lived past the age of 60 65 i think we need to really sort of get a grip and stop worrying about the the pandemic thinking it is the worst thing that's ever happened to us because it really is not it's one of a series of things over the centuries that happen in this world of ours and believe it or not you know in another five to ten years time we're all going to be on to the next thing or the next thing they'll find you know a cure we're already having you know people uh, having uh, shops to prevent things it is not it's I know that for many it's a disaster because for many people, you people have suffered with COVID, but then before then people suffered with uh, influenza. People died in their thousands and thousands every year, even now died in their thousands and thousands just with the regular common cold, which turned into sort of something worse, influenza. And, um, you know, that we, we, if we have to sort of uh, stop being panicked by this and stop worrying about this, there's nothing we can do except to do what we know we should do, which is to take all precautions that are necessary to avoid, um, you know, catching or getting something that we don't want. But that not only applies to COVID, it, it also applies to many, many other things as well. So, you know... I'm, I'm a great advocate of reason. So if we could apply reason to this, the spirit world is not concerned with um, with COVID. The, the spirit world is not concerned with influenza. The spirit world is not concerned with cancer. The spirit world is not concerned at the rate of heart disease that has increased exponentially over years and years and years to a point where it's become an epidemic uh, in, in, in some terms. Um, we have our choices in, in this world of ours and in this life of ours, we have choices. Do they worry about us? Yes, but they worry mostly about how we deal with the things that go on in our lives rather than, you know, it's not about saving us or keeping us alive for as long as possible. Death is not a punishment. Death is a glorious and a beautiful and a wonderful thing. None of us wants to race towards it. Of course, we don't, uh, myself included, because, you know, I'd like to spend as much time with my grandson as I possibly can. I'd like to see him growing up. I'd like to see him become a young man, all of those things that we like to do. But life is tenuous at the very best of times, and we should make the most of it. For whatever reason and whatever is going on out there, we should make the most of the time that we have and the life that we have. Chris. Tiger Pixie would like to know, do we have the same personalities on the other side? Uh, yes, that's a simple answer. Absolutely, yes. So they're saying yeah. if they're stubborn now, will they stay stubborn? <laughs> well, you know, stubbornness is not a bad thing. Speaking as a very stubborn person myself, stubbornness is not a bad thing. You know, stubbornness for the sake of it, being mule-headed, doing something just because somebody says you can't, for instance, or being stubborn enough to not be reasonable, um, to, you know, to because when you're really a stubborn person, the way you make stubbornness work for you is you know that what you do is you take a step back and you assess the situation, taking a breath, take a step back, look at things as they reasonably are but stubbornness also is a uh, part of the determination that we have to keep going to plow through things to to stubbornness is that that part of you know that thing that drives us towards our, our determined goals so stubbornness is a good thing and a bad thing and i think that as we go grow more spiritual and as we become more aware i think that the the not so good side of stubbornness and the not so good side of our characters lessons and we make more and more the most of those parts of our character that are good and, and 
you know, and great that we can develop into something even more rare and more beautiful. Carlos would like to know how to stay strong and happy. Attitude. Everything is attitude. And I can't stress it uh, more strongly. Um, I was talking to my eight-year-old grandson uh, this week. And um, I was talking to him about the saying, you know, there's a saying, your glass is half full or your glass is half empty. And he was, uh, he was getting upset and being negative about, I don't remember even what it was now. But it's, oh, and this happened, and da, 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 and I don't have, and this, and so on and so forth. And I said, how about, instead of looking at it with a half glass empty, how about looking at it with a glass half full? In other words, uh, oh, well, at least I have this, and I can do that, and I've got such and such. And he did understand the concept. And now I can apply it. Every time I see him going down that slippery slope of negativity, I can say, is your glass half full? If you've got, is your glass half empty? And even sometimes it's so hard for us, uh, it's so hard for us to keep that, uh, the ability to, to, you know, to force ourselves sometimes to think whatever is going on, there's always someone worse. There's always someone worse off. Uh, but I think positivity is the best thing, being positive and striving for positivity. Uh, somebody once said to me many, 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 many years ago, you know, no matter, Rosemary, how low you are, and at the time I was pretty sunk to the bottom. I didn't think I could get any lower. And this guy said to me, however low you think you are, listen very carefully because there's always someone knocking down below. In other words, there's always further to go down. So however low you might think you are, listen carefully. There's always people who are much worse off than you. There are always people who are lower than you, more depressed than you. That helps us to stay more positive. Chris. <coughs> Eric wants to know, did you reincarnate after your life with Grey Eagle as Apache? Eric, you can't ask me those things. I'm thinking, why, why can't you? Well, but just because you can't. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not giving you an answer. How about that? <laughs> Carolyn wants to know, when first saw the spirit world? So I think maybe she means when you first saw the spirit world for the very first time, what surprised you the most? Well, when I first saw the spirit world, I was far too young and I wasn't surprised. I was terrified. So, you know, when, you, when you're when you just two and three years old and you see faces and you hear voices and they're all around you and they're whispering in your ear and you hide under the blankets because you're absolutely terrified, but you can still see them even though the blankets are over, you can still see them, you can still hear them. I think terror was the uh, the, the feeling I felt the most. Uh, because I didn't understand it, terror and uncertainty. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't. I'm I, off off the cuff. I can't actually think of of uh, those first moments when I realized that this was a joyful and a wonderful thing. I'll have to think about that. And if I think about it and come up with the answer, maybe I'll tell you at another time. Lori wants to know, what is the biggest thing food-wise that people in the spirit world miss the most? Have you heard any stories about that? Um, well, they don't really miss because they can live vicariously through us. So if I'm making my delicious trifle, which I usually only make around Christmas time, and my father wants to come in, I'm sure he can have a taste. I know that he can experience a taste through me, connecting with me, because we connect on a whole different level. It's a, we're not a physical thing. It's a, it's much more. It's emotional and spiritual, and our senses take over, and our, you know, our sixth sense connect, connects in, and we connect with those in the spirit world to the point that they are experiencing what we're experiencing. Chris, 
Sandra says um, she also had pizza too. Um, <laughs> so she says, Ro Rosemary, occasionally I will see a spark of light flash to my side. Oh. When I look straight at it, it will be gone. It's not there anymore, is it? That's could so this be my spirit guide? Um, it could be. The chances are that it could be uh, someone in your family or someone you love or someone you care about in the spirit world. It could be your family trying to let you know that they're around. But that those little flashes that can be quite elusive. Uh, so just... Uh, have patience and uh, and take your time and you know i always tell people sit quietly for 10 minutes every day not to ask anything not to ask a question not to ask for a sign or a symbol or anything just i'm here i'm sitting here with you this is my time with you if you like to come and talk to me if you'd like to come around me that's great and if you don't it's also great but this is my 10 minutes with you guys if you want to share that 10 minutes with me and then you need to shut up you need to stop your mind from working. You need to stop asking all those questions. You know, give me a sign, knock three times, all of that stuff. I've done it all myself. I know what I'm talking about here. But if you just be quiet and you listen and you pay attention, you pay attention to your senses and your sensitivity, you raise your level of consciousness. We are doing webinars to help people to understand more what it is that I'm talking about when I'm saying these things. Um, and that way, uh, you know, give, what we're doing is we're giving them a chance. We're here. Come around if you'd like. Chris. Gaylene says, my husband passed away four days ago. I pray to him if we are going to be okay and he is with me and our kids and grandsons. Well, first, let me tell you how very sorry I am for your loss. Uh, I'm asking Grey Eagle, who tells me it's a little soon for us to do this, but I can tell you that he's fine. And I can also tell you that there's no way in this world that you won't be okay. So I think you've got a lot of people in your family in the spirit world. I think you've got your beloved in the, in the spirit world who's with you. I think you'll be fine. It, feel, it feels, and Chris, I know this is a, a question that's very close to you right now because this, for those of you watching who don't know, Chris lost her husband a few weeks ago. So, uh, you know, uh, as much as it feels like the end of your world has come, the bottom has dropped out of your world, you'll never be ever the same again, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, I can promise you that you will be okay. Cheryl says, people on this earth being of different colors and sizes, I am wondering what this is like on the other side. I think it's much the same. Next question, Tiger Pixie. Yes. How yes. much free will or choices do we have during life? The more I know, the more I can tell you, very little. I think there's so much that is planned out for us. What we have choices about, and I'm going to use this again. You'll get tired of me saying this to you tonight. We have the choice of free will, of attitude, of how we're going to react to those things around us that happen. We have a choice of a free will to decide how we're going to deal with the traumas and the trials and the tribulations that, that plague us from time to time. We have a choice in how we deal with other people, how we uh, either accept others or turn away from others or disparage others. It's all about our attitude. We have a free will about our attitude. And that's pretty much it. But let me tell you, if we have a positive attitude and if we have kindness and gentleness and we use those things uh, with those people around us, within our lives, with, with those people who we meet, um, we actually can't go wrong. I think I'm living proof of that. Chris. All right. I'm going to ask you to tie in a couple of things. So the question is from Mary, 
why are some people passing from COVID and others are not? When I read this question, I've thought about many of your stories about, you know, 9-11. Some people passed, some people didn't. Uh, airline flights, you got on the airplane, you didn't get on the airplane. Um, you've, you've just shared many stories over the years about this type of thing. People attempting suicide and not succeeding. People succeeding. So well, there you go. There's say, your question. Let me say, you cannot go before your time. If it is your time, whether it is with COVID, cancer, heart disease, influenza, uh, let me see, collapsed lungs, heart attack, you name it. There's a lot of ways to go. COVID is one of, you know, such a minute thing in the scheme of things. Uh, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. However you die, it's, uh, it, it doesn't matter. If it's your time, something is going to get you. And it doesn't matter what that something is either. So, you know, so that's life. When it's your time to die, you will die. Although we don't believe in death or dying, but you will die. And, and there's nothing you can do about it. But if it is not your time, I can assure you, your angels, your family, uh, God himself, they'll all push you right back here. You cannot go before it's your time. So if you've had friends or family who've died of COVID, it's not because they've died of COVID. It's because it's their time to go. And COVID just happened to be that one thing that took them in that moment. So... You know, I always say to people, please don't don't panic. Don't, you know, don't get upset about things uh, as much as we seem to do. Try, try to be more reasonable. Try to put your feet on the ground and to look at things sensibly. As long as you understand, if it's your time to go, you know, you can sneeze and you'll be gone. God will just come pick you up, just grab you right there and take you to this beautiful wonderful place that we i know we all go to so death is not a punishment I keep saying this how many times have i said that today death is not a punishment chris jeff wants to know who is the oldest historical figure that has come through to you oh gosh hi jeff how are you yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay i guess chris you're testing me i'm trying to think <laughs> Uh, well, let's think about this. Um, Jesus, certainly. How far back are we going? I'm trying to think anyone before Jesus, but that'll do it for now, I think. That's good enough, right? Yes. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just um, wondering because I have also seen and spoken to... Uh, the Virgin Mary, to my absolute amazement, I have to tell you, uh, quite, that was quite a stunning thing because it was so unexpected. I mean, Jesus Christ is my friend and uh, I've known him for many, many years. So to see him and talk to him is not unusual for me or a surprise for me. Um, but I, I was wondering, <laughs> is Mary older than Christ? I guess she is, isn't she? <laughs> Yeah. So, which so, came first the chicken or the uh, yeah, egg yes i think mary first. came yeah anyway <laughs> <laughs> that'll do for now <laughs> but you right. know, i think i'm actually going to think about that <laughs> all right carolyn is clarifying her question from earlier she says i meant the first time you traveled to the spirit world what surprised you about what you saw um The first time that I traveled consciously, actually saying, okay, I'll go. In other words, not being taken there by surprise and not finding myself in a place that was surprising to me. I'm trying to think of so many stories. Um, I remember having a, 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 my first out of body and traveling uh, through time and space uh, on a conscious level when I was in it was I was in Egypt many many years ago I remember sort of I was 
I was staying with uh, with friends and uh, I was standing between this bedroom had two single beds and I remember standing between the two beds and there's a there was a window and the curtain was a little bit open and there's a street light outside so you could actually see in into the bedroom and I remember seeing the beds seeing the bedside table which was in the middle of the bed and I remember standing there thinking to myself literally looking down thinking what's my doing you know what's my doing out of bed and and it's not unusual for me to get up and go pee in the middle of the night so but I remember not feeling the need to pee and I remember sort of just turning my head to sort of head back into the bed and as I turned my head I saw myself in bed very weird anyway but this is my first thought my very first thought was oh this must be what it's like to be dead and then I was off and traveling but I wasn't surprised by that so it was just a oh this is what it's like then. Um, I think uh, there was a time when, and it was in the very early days when I experienced traveling, and I found myself in this place, and I would say that I was more excited than surprised. I was excited be because I found myself in a, in a marketplace, and I was walking, there were tons and tons of people in amongst all of these market stalls and I was walking through this group of people who were all sort of going about their business uh, and I, it was, I was the ghost walking through this place because nobody saw me and I just kept turning to people and saying hello and hello and I was so excited by the colours and the, and the, the, the sort of incredible um, you know, energy of everything going on the colors were amazing and so I was excited I wasn't surprised so much but I was excited but when I actually reached the other side so I suppose here I am going very, a very long-winded way around answering this question um, I remember finally coming to the bridge so sort of, I'd walked through the town to this marketplace I'd walked through I came to a bridge and there were two I can only tell you that there were guardians standing one on either side of the bridge and as I stepped up onto the bridge it was one of those little humpty back bridges with a with a sort of a stone wall going across it and I remember stepping up onto the bridge and one of the guardians these guardians stood on to one side of me and the other stood on the other side of me and I remember putting my hands on the, the parapet on the on the wall of the bridge and uh, and looking over um the the, the scenery and um uh, and I, I turned to the, this, the person, uh, the guardian on my right, and I said, excuse me, could you, could you tell me where I am? And uh, because I was so excited and fascinated by everything that was going on. And uh, she said to me, uh, you're on the A21. And as she said it, she put her hand on my, on my hand. And that was probably the most surprising, the most shocking, and the most terrifying because her hand was solid on mine. And all of a sudden, everything that I'd experienced this far in this one particular uh, time travel experience, if you, if you like, was suddenly, because she was so real, it was flesh on flesh. And, uh, and it shocked me and it surprised me and it terrified me all at once and I just thought I, just, I need to go home I gotta go home and the next thing I found myself flying backwards into my into my bed into my body into my bed yes very weird anyway so yes uh, but I do write about that particular story that experience um, in my books, I'm not quite sure which one you'll find it in. That means you've got to read all of them, doesn't it, to find that story and many others like it. So there you go, Chris. Mona wants to know, will I ever find true love? Um, well, this is an interesting one because Gregor tells me you already have true love. Um, you have the love of many people. You have the love of excuse me, many people in the spirit world, I don't think you could get a truer love 
than the love that was given to you as a baby. Interesting. But I know that you mean, will I ever have a relationship, a personal relationship, a romantic relationship, whatever, will I find that kind of true love? But I think if you first start with the fact that you already have it, so you know what it feels like, you've had it, maybe not from people you necessarily wanted to get it from, but uh, you've already had it, you know what it feels like, and then reach for it. Just go out there and reach for it. If you're sitting at home twiddling your thumbs, the answer to your question is you'll never find it. This is not going to come to you. You've got to go out and get it. Chris. Brittany says, if someone only feels things spiritually without ever seeing things, are they still gifted? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, a very, very wonderful healer, Paul Denham, who has, I'm sure, since passed, unless he's lived to be a hundred and something. Uh, he was, you can read his, you can read about him in The Eagle and the Rose. Uh, and uh, he, he was a healer for 30 years, never saw a thing, never experienced a thing by sight, but he felt and he sensed and he just was aware and he was the most amazing gifted healer, one of the most amazing I think I've ever met. So you don't have to see to know. Chris. I'm going to combine two different people's questions here. Um, Twiggy Leaf says, I heard that your daughter saw a fairy once. What did it look like? And Judith says, Edgar Casey saw fairies. His son later saw fairies. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, well, we all know, or most of us, if, you do, if you're listening to this and you don't know who Edgar Casey is, please check him out. Uh, amazing. He has a, an amazing uh, center. He's, he's passed years and years ago, but, uh, oh boy, he was extremely gifted. Um, my father was, I did not see the fairy, and I have never actually seen a fairy, so just to put the record straight, but my father, who was uh, staying with us at the time on a very, very rare visit, uh, was down at the bottom of the garden. Yes, that's where the fairies are, isn't it? Down at the bottom of the garden with my daughter who was then probably maybe four, five, six, something like that. She, you know, she, she wasn't older than that because my my daddy passed when she was uh, six years old. So she'd probably be maybe about three or four years old at the time. And she came running in s s just beside herself. Mummy, 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 quick, quick, quick. And she was cl clasping her hands like this, holding them really, really tight. And she said, I've caught a fairy, I've caught a fairy. And her, my father came in behind her and he's beaming, beaming ear to ear. And he's nodding at me and saying, yes, she caught a fairy. So I said, and I know she was running up to show the fairy to me. And she, she opened her hands out like this. There was nothing there. And her eyes grew really wide and really big. And she started, the bottom lip started to tremble. And I said, oh, my goodness me. Well, I know the fairy was there because it was you for you. She, she came for you. And it's your magic. It's not mummy's magic. It's your magic. So, oh, I love magic. Don't you love magic? I believe in magic very much so. So, anyway, Chris. All right. Grace is asking, do the perceptions of people who die change after death? Well, yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what about all those people who don't believe in an afterlife? But you've been amazed how many people I've spoken to in the spirit world. Well, I didn't believe in this until I got here. And now look at me. Uh, yeah, of course, perceptions change. Experiences I mean, perceptions change with all of us from the time we're born until the time we die, all the way in between there. Our perception, perceptions of things change as we learn, as we grow, as we have more experiences in different ways. So, of course, our perceptions change because we're learning and we're growing all the time. Mona wants to know, do you think the Joan Benet Ramsey case will be solved? Well, it already is, and I shouldn't worry about it anymore. That's all I have to say about that one. 
Carlos is asking for personal advice about love. Who is? Carlos. Well, um, we, I wish, oh gosh, I wish I had more time for you. Uh, if you need personal advice, well, to talk about it in public like this, it sort of stops it from being personal, doesn't it? But I'm going to suggest that you either come to one of our webinars or you, um, or you sort of book an appointment either with me or with somebody like me uh, and make a private appointment because I think, you know, the subject is, it's a long one. Chris. Uh, Vera is saying, I have a photo of Hans Christian Andersen, the fairy tale teller. I took some pictures in through the window of his childhood home. He is sitting in a chair as an adult, and you can see his face and body. You can see his face what? And body. Oh, right. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, Danny Kay, where it came from, I could not tell you, but that name just appeared in my mind. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Danny Kay playing Hans Christian Andersen. Danny Kay is an old movie star. Uh, he was a comedian, but he plays Hans Christian Andersen better than anybody else I know. And those movies, if you can find them, I'm sure you'll be able to find them on YouTube. Just Google Hans Christian, uh, just Google, sorry, Danny Kaye. Uh, and I think it's K-A-Y-E. Um, and uh, Danny Kaye and uh, <clears throat> Fairy Tales, or Danny Kaye and Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, and... Um, Oh, they're marvelous films. They're marvelous for you, you know, to sort of, even though they're old, they're still marvelous to show to your children. They're magical movies. Chris. All right. We're coming up on the hour, Rosemary, about five okay. minutes. Okay. Um, Vera said, no, sorry. I just read that one. Um, Tick, Tiger Pixie says, my aunt passed last Saturday. Sorry. I, let me read this again. My aunt passed last Sunday. We had her funeral yesterday, which was so beautiful. I hope she was able to see it all. I'm absolutely certain that she was. I'm absolutely certain. Chris. And then last question. Rhonda would like to have confirmation that her aunt Marilyn, who's on the other side now, knows how much I love her. I think you know that she knows. You just would like that confirmation. You would like me to say she absolutely knows that you love her. But I am going to put this question to Grey Eagle, who is nodding and saying, absolutely, you have your confirmation. So that's it. We've done our off the cuff. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, we shall be back. We might do another off the cuff. Be prepared. Watch out for us. You never know when we're going to pop in on you. Uh, but we should definitely be here on Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's 11 a.m. Uh, New York time. Um, if you have to work it out for yourselves now. I think in England, if anybody's watching from England, 11 a.m. is 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, and... Uh, we should be back for story time on Saturday morning and to take some more of your questions. Uh, and we should be popping in and out uh, from time to time doing off the cuff. And of course, we'll be back next Thursday morning with our The Spirit World Sees All as usual. And you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. Twitter <laughs> and LinkedIn and all of those other places. And we would ask you, uh, if you've enjoyed being with us, could you please share, share, share? Would you click your share button and share us with all of your friends and all your relatives? Don't worry whether they believe or not. Just send it out there into the universe and let it do what it needs to do. Uh, because, you know, the more people, more of you who share, the more good we can do around the world. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, please have a very, very blessed rest of the evening, day, whatever it is for you there. I think in, in uh, Australia it's morning, I think. So have a very blessed rest of the whatever it is. Uh, thank you, Chris. You were fabulous. I'd like to say thank you to Great Eagle. And I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of us for joining us. Bye-bye, everybody.